how to make this animated and interactive infographic with Adobe Animate and Adobe Illustrator CC. You'll learn how to make all these moving, rotating and interactive elements. But first, we'll take a look at the original Adobe Illustrator file. And when we've done that, we'll import it in Adobe Animate. The basic file you see here is an infographic that I designed for a Dutch energy company. It was originally created for print, but I've slightly adjusted the size and object placement to make it fit correctly in the interactive version. This version can be placed on websites, interactive magazines and applications. The layer structure in this illustrator document will be converted into Adobe Animate Timeline layers, so it's important to set them up properly first. In this case, I've created two layers, one layer for all moving objects and one for all the background objects. Now I'm going to set up the Adobe Animate file. In the Animate Start screen you can best choose Advanced and then HTML5 Canvas. We can also set up the document size here. This has to be 900 by 500 pixels, because that's exactly the size of our original Illustrator file. We can now easily import the Adobe Illustrator file in Animate. To do this, go to File, Import and then Import to Stage. This is because we want to place the Illustrator file immediately on our stage. First select your file and then make sure Select All Layers is checked and click Import. You see that all objects are placed now and can be selected separately. This means that we can animate them now. But before we do that, I first lock my background layer, because I don't want to move my background content accidentally when I start animating. You can do this by clicking the background layers lock button in the timeline panel. So, now you know how to import your illustrator assets, we can start animating the first items in the next video. This is the second video in a series of 5 in which we will learn how to make this animated and interactive infographic with Adobe Animate and Adobe Illustrator CC. In the previous video we've imported an Adobe Illustrator file into Adobe Animate. In this video you'll make your first object move. We'll first start with this cloud. We're going to animate it in a continuing loop from the left to the right of the stage. To do this, it's very important to convert the cloud to a symbol first. Make sure you've selected the selection tool in the tools panel. When you've done that, you can select the cloud on the stage, right click and choose Convert to Symbol. I'll name the symbol Cloud and then click OK. Now we've got a symbol, we can start animating it. Because I want to animate the cloud from the left to the right, I'll first move it to the start position, outside the stage. To make a continuing loop, you've got to go to the cloud symbol's own timeline. This is almost the same principle as the isolation mode in Adobe Illustrator. To go to this timeline, double click on the cloud. When you've done that, you'll see the symbol's own timeline. To make the symbol move, we've got to create a motion tween first. Right click the cloud and then create motion tween. Animate now asks to convert this cloud to a symbol again. We could have done this before, but actually it's not really wrong to do it now. So just click OK. Note that the timeline has now been changed, because Animate has added the motion tween to your timeline. This motion tween is an animation of one second, but nothing happens yet. Make sure your playhead is at the end of the motion tween, and now move the cloud to the right, outside the stage. Animate has now made an animation. Press Enter to view it. As you can see, this is a very fast animation because it only takes one second. We can change this by making the motion tween a lot longer by dragging it all the way to 16 seconds. When you press Enter to view it again, you'll see it now takes 16 seconds to go from the left to the right. Click on Scene 1 to go back to the main timeline and you can now test this animation in the browser by going to Control Test. This is the only way to see the animation loop. So, now you know how to animate something from the left to the right, we can start making rotations in the next video. This is already the third video in a series of five, 
in which you will learn how to make this animated and interactive infographic with Adobe Animate and Adobe Illustrator CC. In the previous videos we first imported an Adobe Illustrator file into Adobe Animate. In the second video we've animated this cloud. Now we'll animate the windmill and the two round arrows. The process of doing this is almost the same as our last animation, but you have to add one more thing. First of all, we have to convert the windmill blades to a symbol. So first select the blades, right click and then convert to symbol. I'll name the symbol windmill and then click OK. Now we've got a symbol we can start rotating it. Just like our last animation we want to make a continuing loop. So we've got to go to the cloud symbol's own timeline. To do this double click the blades first. You now see the symbol's own timeline. To make the blades rotate we've got to create a motion tween. Right click the blades and then create motion tween. Animate now asks you to convert the blades to a symbol again. Just click OK to let Animate do this for you. The timeline has now been changed because Animate has added the motion tween of 1 second to your timeline. We only need to change one option in the properties panel to make a rotation. Just go to the rotation section and enter 1 in the rotate field. Animate has now added the rotation. Press enter to view it. I think the rotation is way too fast now, so I'll make the motion tween a bit longer by dragging it to 3 seconds. When you press enter to view it again, you'll see it now takes 3 seconds to rotate the blades one time. Click on scene 1 to go back to the main timeline. You can now test this animation in the browser by going to Control, Test. You can also rotate the round arrows in the same way. When you're done, the animation looks like this. So, now that you know how to rotate items, we can animate items along a motion path in the next video. This is the fourth video in a series of five in which you will learn how to make this animated and interactive infographic with Adobe Animate and Adobe Illustrator CC. In the previous videos we've animated some of the rotating and moving objects. Now we'll animate these little arrows along a motion path. There's a very easy but quite hidden trick to do this. The basic steps are almost the same as in the previous videos, so let's go to animate. First of all we need this illustrator path in the future. So I select it now and copy it with command or control C and use it later. Now we'll first convert this arrow into a symbol. Select the arrow, right click and then click convert to symbol. I'll name this symbol arrow 1 and click OK. Now that we've got a symbol we've got to go to the cloud symbol's own timeline to animate it there. Double click the arrow to do this. We are now in the symbol's own timeline. First we make a basic motion tween like we did in the second video when we animated the cloud. To do this I first right click on the arrow and then create motion tween. Animate now asks you to convert the arrow to a symbol again. Just click OK to let Animate do this for you. First make sure your playhead is at the end of the motion tween and then move the arrow to the right hand side of the pipeline. Let's test this animation by pressing enter. The animation is now too fast so I drag the end of the motion tween to 6 seconds. I think that'll be long enough. I press enter again and I think the speed is fine now. Of course the arrow is not moving along the path yet. What we're going to do now is swap this motion path with the path we've copied earlier. To do this you must first select the motion path and then all you have to do is paste. We have to move the path up a little to make it fit on the main path. So I first click on it and then move it to the right place. Press enter now to test the animation. As you can see, the arrow is not rotating in the right direction yet. The only thing we have to do to make this happen is to select the motion tween and then check the orient to path option in the properties panel. As you can see, the arrow now moves nicely along the path. Click on scene 1 to go back to the main timeline. I've already repeated all steps on the other arrow, so when we test this animation in the browser by going to control test, we see the end result. So, 
Now you know how to move and rotate objects along a motion path, we can start creating interactive elements in the next video. This is the fifth and last video in a series of five in which you will learn how to make this animated and interactive infographic with Adobe Animate and Adobe Illustrator CC. In the previous videos we've animated all the rotating and moving objects and this video shows you how to add interactivity to your document. I'll show you how to make these buttons and how to make them clickable. To keep this tutorial as simple as possible, I've created this new more empty document to show you how interactivity works. I'll first test this document in the browser. To do this I go to Control Test. As you can see, this document contains a looping animation. The pop-up opens, closes again and so on. So the first thing to do is to add a few stop actions to stop this animation. Then we add some actions to the button so that it starts the animation when the user clicks on it. In Adobe Animate I first double click on the pop-up that I've already created before. You now see the pop-up animation, but we want to stop it in the first frame. That's why I now click on the first frame in the actions layer that I've already created. Now go to Window Actions to open the Actions panel. We can add some code here with a very handy Actions wizard. Click on the Add Using Wizard button to do this. Now we have to tell Animate what to do at this position in the timeline. In this case we want to stop the animation. So first scroll down and click on Stop. Now click on this timeline, then Next to go to the next step and now on with this frame. Click on Finish and Add to add the code. The code has now been added to the first frame. You can also see this because there is a small A symbol in the first frame. I'll repeat this step for the tenth frame. The animation has to stop there again when we've clicked the button. So I'll select this frame, click on the Add Using Wizard button, scroll down, click on Stop, now click on this timeline, then Next with this frame and now click finish and add. All stop actions have been added now. Let's go back to scene 1 to add the actual interactivity. Before we can add this interactivity we have to name all symbol instances on the main timeline. We can do this by first clicking on the info button with the selection tool, then go to the properties panel and type info button in the instance name field. Now select the pop-up instance. Go to the instance name field again and name it pop-up. We have to add the actual interactivity to the first frame in the actions layer. So first click on this frame and then go back to the actions panel. Now click on the add using wizard button. Scroll down in the first menu and click on play. We do this because we want to play the pop-up animation when we click on the info button. That's why we have to click pop-up in the next field. Now click next. Now we have to tell Animate what the trigger is to start the animation. This is a mouse click, so select on mouse click. And because we clicked the info button, we have to select info button in the next field. Now click finish and add, and the code is now added to the first frame. The interactivity should now work when we test this in the browser. Go to control test to do this. I'll click the button and it works. So, together with all the previous videos, I think you have all the tools now to make a stunning interactive infographic yourself.